Hello, fellow crafters. This morning, I wanted to show you again technique number two in marbling. This is Jane Fires, Coach 151 with Fun Stamper's Journey. Last week, I showed you the technique of, water, of marbling using shaving cream, two different kinds, and it looked like this. Today, however, I want to simply use water in our silks. And when I do, this one here will look similar to this. Remember, none of your marbling are going to be exactly the same, but this one is done on our whipped cream cardstock. And then I'm going to show you several using our color splash paper. And this, of course, is our watercolor paper. It's thicker. And with this process today, we're only going to use our silks. Okay, now this piece of paper is our basic cardstock, our whipped cream, and this one is our color splash sheets. Now both can be used for marbling, and both can be used for both techniques, both the uh, shaving cream one and the water one. Now today I'm going to show you just the water one, because last week we did do the uh, shaving cream one using both our re-anchors and our silks. Today we're simply going to use our re-anchors. Now the big thing on this that I have found is that because you're using water, when you pour it into the container you're going to use, you want to pour it slowly because if you pour it too fast, you're going to get a lot of bubbles. And air bubbles in this technique is what you do not want. You can see, for example, here in one of my watercolor sheets that I marbled, I have little white dots. Well, those are air bubbles. If you find that you have air bubbles, what I found that works is simply to take some kind of a little pick and go into your water and pop your air bubbles because that way the air bubbles hopefully will not get onto your cardstock. <clears throat> now you can do this with any size piece of paper, for example, our cardstock, 8.5 by 11, but I've chosen because I'm making cards just to use the 8 by 8 uh, foil pan that I can throw away. And then what you're going to use will be our silks. Now today I'm using our bubble gum, which is IP0092. And I'm using Cranberry Bliss, which is IP0094. Now remember, you want to make sure that you shake them up because the residue that's in the bottom, you want mixed in with your silk. And simply what I'm going to do is take my silk and tap some of it off my brush into my water. Now the bubble gum one is a little harder to get tapped in where I want it. And you're going to have to work fairly quickly in order to get enough in and get it so that it will not separate completely before you dip in your uh, color splash or your cardstock. Now one thing to remember with this process is that these do not make as many as the other one did. Now on this dish here, I'm going to put in a piece of our whipped cream cardstock, dip it in and pull it out. And here's what I have right here. You can see as I tip it, it will run some. Because I have my bigger blots of Cranberry Bliss, it's going to show up more. And then you're going to want to lay it off. I lay it on, on um, paper towel because that way it will dry completely. Then I'm going to stick in here some more uh, bubble gum silk. And I'll do another piece of regular cardstock. And this is what I get on this one. Now remember, you're not going to get any two pieces, whether you use the water technique or the uh, shaving cream technique in marbling. None of them are going to come out exactly the same. Now your first one is going to be your darkest one. Your second one is going to be lighter. And let's try one more without adding anything, but it's going to be really light if it even shows up. And see on this one, it barely showed up. So the water one is one that um, you don't get nearly as many out of, but that one is done right there just with our whipped cream cardstock. And I'm going to change my water so I'm starting over with clean water. And again, I want to make sure that I don't have bubbles in it. And now with this one, I'm going to use our color splash sheets, which of course are our watercolor sheets. Again, I'm going to make sure that I have everything shook up well. 
put in a few drops of my Cranberry Bliss. And you can tell that when I put in the bubble gum, my cranberry sort of separates. So now I'm going to take one of my watercolor sheets, lay it in, and lift it up. And there is that one. And you can tell it's going to drip off some. You can tell I have an air bubble right there. So I'm going to pop it, tip my paper a little and see, but nope, the coloring won't go there. So now I've got a big air bubble in my water. So I'm working it out and I will pop it because I really don't want air bubbles. And even your smallest air bubble will look big on your paper. Okay, so here's another piece. I'm going to do the very same thing. There's this one now. Lay it aside to dry. Okay, there's another couple air bubbles. Then I'm going to push this one down in further into my water and bring it up. And you can tell it's getting lighter. Okay, so there's that one. Now let's add just a little more color for one more. And again, I'm just using the Cranberry Bliss and the Bubblegum Silk. And of course, with this process, you can use any of your silks that you have. Lay that one on. And there's that one. So you can tell that when you use your silks with this particular process, you really get a very bright color, a lot brighter than you do with your with you do with your um, shaving cream, I think. Okay, and there's the last one there. So that's how you do the two marbling techniques, shaving cream and with the water. I'm gonna clean my mess up now, and then I'll be back with the next video. And in that video, I'm gonna actually show you how I did, these are some of the cards that I did using this particular technique. Down here at the bottom, of course, is my marbling. Um, this one, I used my flower. I stamped my flower on it, and then I highlighted that one. And then this one again, the background is complete marbling, and then again I used the Sweet Rose stamp set, and I highlighted it with our water splash pencils. So I'll show you these cards, how I did them, in just a few minutes. Okay, the technique we just finished doing was, of course, our watercolor marbling technique. Um, and I've also, of course, shown you in the very first video the marbling technique using the shaving cream. Now, this was the card I showed you in the first technique with the shaving cream and marbling. And down here at the bottom, you can see that I've marbled it. The flower that I've used in this particular one is one of is our new one and called Embroidered Rose. It's this one right here, and I'll show you how I did that in just a moment. But I like this stamp set. It's brand new, and it looks like it's actually been embroidered. Now, if any of you know anything about embroidering, you know it's not an easy technique to use. And so this makes a really beautiful card. Along with it, of course, is our die, the embroidered rose die set. So not only can you stamp it, but you can also die cut it. On this particular card here that I've shown you, the other thing that I used was our cake time. A stamp set and I used the word celebrate at the bottom. I also of course used the Journey black satin ribbon. The colors I used for my rose were Limeade Splash and Cranberry Bliss. These are the two that I've used. Now I'm going to show you these because I'm going to stamp one of the roses and then that's as far as with this card that I'm going to do because you can pretty well see how this one is done. But then I'm going to show you one using a sweet rose uh, stamp set that we did today in our watercolor one. So I'm going to set those things aside. Here's my basic white cardstock. This is my rose stamp now out of that set. And you can see that up here is going to be my rose, but then down here is the bottom part of my flower, which is the green part. So what I'm going to do is first of all take Cranberry Bliss 
and I'm going to very carefully line it up the best that I can at the base of the flower and then ink the rose. Now I want to get a good inking so as you can tell I'm pressing on my ink pad because I want to make sure that I have that rose well inked. And that one looks fairly well done so we're going to go on to Limeade Splash. Now Limeade Splash only needs the bottom and so you can tell that I use my shorter end of my ink pad and I'm very carefully lining it up so that I can see where my ink pad is going to be and there I've got my green. So now I'm going to stamp it down. Now it will tell if I've bled any into any of the other areas and I may have. Press it down well and there it is. Now you can see right here I did some red so we're going to try that one one more time and again lining it up very carefully and after you've done this a few times really it's not that hard um, to do it's just that I'm really trying to get a good inking for the camera and for you so now I'm going to go down to the bottom again if I see that I have some of the color where I don't want it it can always be wiped out, wiped off with the baby wipe. Okay, let's turn this one over and stamp it down. And that one's much better. So that's simply the embroidered bros, the new stamp set and the new big catalog. And that's how you would do that particular uh, stamp with the rows. And of course, then you can die cut it, and when you do, you'll get your rose looking like this. On this rose, you can tell it's a little sparkle. I think you can see that. I used, of course, our sparkle silk. So let's lay those aside, and we're going to go on to this particular uh, flower right here. Now, this is one of them that we did, and this is the other one. And this is the one here that I'm going to demo to you today, but I want to tell you about this one. In both cases, I have used our watercolor paper, uh, which is called Color Splash. It looks like this. You get 20 uh, sheets in a package, and it's excellent when you're doing anything with water. The other thing, of course, that I have used is I have also used whipped cream cardstock. Today our card bases are made using Cranberry Bliss. And this particular paper pack is called Mystic Romance. And this is one of my very all-time favorites. I love the different flowers in here. And the backs of them look like denim. So this is really a, a neat set. And you get, of course, four of each. They are double-sided, so you get 24 pieces in a pack. The, the little bee here is really cute, the stars. All right, so this is one of my very favorite. It's Mystic Romance Prints, and it is the print that I have down here at the bottom. The other thing that I've used on this one is, of course, our black sparkle tape. And I put it across rather than using a ribbon. And then the stamp set here that I used is the one we'll use today, Dear Rose. And the words down here are also the embroidered words. They match the flower, the rose, in our paper pack. They also match the flower that we just showed you in embroidered. So this is another neat one. Okay, let's get started and let's do our card for today. This is the card that we're going to do for today. It is watercolor. This is watercolor paper. Now, of course, the watercolor paper that I just showed you how to marble, I can't use. It's still wet. So I'm going to take a couple of these other ones. Now, here you can see, again, there's some air bubbles. There's an air bubble up there. So this would be a good one just simply to use, instead of as a background, to use it to stamp my flower on. But then these are all other ones that I have used um, doing the watercolor background marbling technique. Okay, so this I think is the one we're going to use today. So what I'm going to do is I need to cut it to fit the way I want it. And I never cut my paper exactly, my watercolor paper, until I've made it. Because then I can tell, okay, which end do I want to cut off? Well, this end is the one I want to cut off. And so because my card is going to be the normal card size, 
which is five and a half by four and a quarter, I need to cut off a quarter of an inch. So I'm laying it down on my journey paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut off this particular edge. So now I have it that way. Now which side here do I wanna cut off? I think I wanna cut this side off. So now I'm gonna put it at four and cut that side off. So there's now my base. I have, of course, already cut my card itself. It's, I've cut it the long way so that I have it at four and a half by 11. I'm gonna lay it in my paper trimmer and I'm gonna put on my score blade. And I'm gonna line it up at five and a half, which is half of my 11, of course. And I'm gonna run my score blade over it. Move my trimmer aside and now I can fold my cardstock. Now one of the nice things about our blocks, okay, is that you can use our block as a crease tool, all right? So I'm simply taking my small block and I'm going to run it down across my crease here. So now I have this ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is go to the back of my colored page, or my um, watercolor page, and because this is still just a little bit um, bowed, because of course I've had a lot of water on it, I'm going to use our white liner tape. And I love this tape because it will hold anything. So I'm going to make sure that I tape this down really, really well. I'm going to do all four of my sides, getting my tape as close to the edge as I can. And then I'm going to take one more piece and put it down the middle. And then peel my backings off. Now if you have our bloom tool, it works very well for getting your backings off. So now I'm ready to put it down. I think I want to put it this way. And then I'm sure that it's going to go down. I will press very firmly. Set that aside. Now I'm taking my black licorice. And this, of course, is my Dear Rose. And I'm going to ink up my Dear Rose in black. And now I'm going to decide on this particular paper which is one of my marbling sheets, and it is the color splash sheet. Where do I want my rose? And I'm gonna put it right there, and I'm gonna press down extremely hard so that I get a good inking. Because remember, your color splash pages have some texture to them. So I wanna make sure that I get a really good one. So there's my rose. Now, what I could do if I wanted to, but I think I have enough color on here. I may just color in here and here a little bit. On this card, when I did it, I went over all of my little detail parts of my card and I used two of our uh, color splash pencils. I used number one and number 42, because as you mix these together and then you add your water to them, you can actually make the Cranberry Bliss color. And that's what I did on this particular card right here. So that's the other trick that you can use if you want your flower to be a little darker. And today on this one, I think all I want is a few little places here that I want to color it in. So I'm just lightly taking my pencil, 
holding it towards the back, and I'm just going to color over in a circular motion some of those areas. So now you can see that I've colored in all of those little areas the way I want them. Okay, now what I'm using here is one of our watercolor blending brushes. It can be used for water, it can be used for blending solution. This one I have marked water on because this is my water brush, it is my small one. And simply where I've colored with my color splash pencil, I'm not squeezing my brush at all. I'm just going over it with what water is there in the tip of my brush and I'm going over my entire card where I have put my colored pencil, my color splash pencil at. And what that does of course is it's going to blend in my color. Now there's another way I can do this that I want to show you <clears throat> and that is that I can take my pencil and I can do what I call bleeding. I can squeeze my uh, blending brush here a little and as you can tell I'm getting water out of my brush and then I'm simply going over my pencil tip to get my red color onto my block and a lot of ladies like to do this because they say it's really easier to color this way but then what I do is I lay my pencil aside making sure it doesn't touch anything and I usually try and tap off some of the color that's at the tip of my brush. And then I go ahead and take my brush and I can go back in and add more color where I really want it. So that if some of these little areas that are the shadowed areas, if I want those a little more red than the black, because of course I've used the black as my stamp, I can just go in and color them with some of this other red that I have. So this is just something else that's very, very easy to do, but it's a lot of fun, particularly if you like to color. It's a lot of fun to do and to see the difference. And the, the pencil coloring um, dries on the color splash sheets fairly quickly so that you really don't have to worry about it moving if you would touch it. So just adding in where the darker areas are, a little more of the red color from my number one color splash pencils. And of course I stamped my flower onto a piece of my marble paper. So there's that flower finished. So I'm going to set these things aside now. But the other thing that I want to show you is how our color splash pencils come. They come like this. There are 48 of them <clears throat> so that you have a wide variety of color. And they come in two trays with a brush. All right, so you can see all the color. I have, of course, number one out right now and number 40 out right now. And then in the cover of our tray, you can see it shows you how you can mix. So how I knew to get the Cranberry uh, Bliss one is right here. It says number one plus number 40. So if I wanted the exact cranberry color, I just have to mix those two. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, that's really hard to do. Well, no, it's not. I'm going to show you right now because I'm going to go just to the edge here of my cardstock. That's the color splash. And I'm going to put in just a little bit of the brown. All right, so there's a little bit of the brown. And I'm going to go over it with a little bit of my reddish color. And I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to clean a little bit of this red off my brush that I've had on it. Because I want as true a color here as I can get to show you. Okay, so now I'm simply going to mix the two of these together. Okay, and as you can see, it's making a different color, which is the cranberry color. So simply by using 
number one and number 40, I can achieve my cranberry color, which is, of course, the color that my base card is. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Very easy to do. So now I've got to bring in my Amaze machine because I need to cut this out. Now, a trick in case you don't know, if your plates begin to warp on any of your machines, turn them upside down with your uh, main big plate and let them sit overnight. And a lot of times it will help them to get the warping part out. It's not all going to come out, but it really does help um, to get that part out. Okay, now i got to turn this around a minute so I can see it. Get it lined up exactly where I want it. Now when I do one of these that I'm cutting, just so that I'm sure it doesn't move on me, I have some of my friendly washi tape here. And I go ahead and stick it on because then I know my die will not move. The clicking, ladies, is normal, so don't panic if you hear that. I know a lot of ladies just said, oh, no, my machine makes a noise. It's not hurting anything at all. All right, now there's that piece. And down here, I could still stamp something else if I wanted to and die cut it out as well. All right, because there's my flower now. And it's going to go on this card here. But I also want to have a word on that card. So I'm going to use one of our new sentiments. It is entitled Most Have Sentiments, and I'm going to use the word hello. Now this set does not have a die to it, okay, so you have to fussy cut it. So what I'm going to do is simply line it up on my block. And the thing that's nice about our blocks is we have the grid lines. So you can line your stamp up with one of your grid lines so that you know you're going to have it even and how you want it. And I'm simply going to take a regular piece of whipped cream cardstock. I like stamping my words in black. Um, so that's just my preference. I'm going to stamp it down and then I will fussy cut this. The other thing that I want to show you, these are the rest of the stamps that come in the set that I took our uh, rose out of, Dear Rose. And these are another great set. You've got lots of leaves. You have another hello here. All right, miss you, love you. And of course, your stem and all for your flower. And then this, of course, is all the dyes that you have that goes with Dear Rose, which is nice because then you don't have to fussy cut anything. The advantage here of cutting is I can cut this however I want to, and of course I'm using my Detail Pro scissors. Now, the thing I love about our scissors is that the scissors that have the black blades are ones that are self-sharpening and nothing sticks to them. So that means if I want to cut tape, it's not going to stick to my scissors. And that's one of the advantages of using our scissors from Fun Stamper's Journey. So I've simply fussy cutted this out the way I want it, and it's going to be pop dotted down here. Now, before I put my um, flower on, I'm going to use just a little bit of our glider tape. I'm going to put it here where I want to put some of my threads. Now, I don't know about you, but thread doesn't always do what I want it to do. So what I do is I put down a little bit of my glider, and then I decide, okay, how do I want this to go? I don't want one loop to go over there, and I want another loop to go over here so that I can fasten it down in the middle, all right? And then I just cut this off because I can trim this later. Then I'm taking my uh, rows that I did, and I'm going to use some of our big foam squares, but I don't want to use the whole square, so I'm going to cut them. That's what I like about the scissors, nothing sticks. 
and I'm going to put the halves of my foam tape, my foam squares, exactly on my flower where I want them. And then I'm also going to put a couple here on my word. And of course, you have to peel your backs off on your foam squares, and they come off very easily. So here's my flower, and I want that down. So I'm going to arrange my flower where I want it here. I put it down. Take my words, my backing off on my foam dots. Make sure I have it going the way I want it. I'm going to put it right down there. Hello. I think I'll trim this one off a little bit. And you can play around with your threads so that you can get your threads exactly where you want them and exactly how you want them. So there's my card for today. Now the last thing that I do when I'm going to put the sparkle silk on one of my cards, on the flower or something like I am here, I do it last. And I simply shake, of course, again my sparkle silk because just like all the other silks, the residue is in the bottom. And my bottle in this one is almost empty. And then I just take it and I, with my little brush that comes, of course, with it, I just brush it onto my flower how I want it. And if I want it a little thicker in some spots, I put it in a little thicker. If I don't, then I put it thinner. You can always go back and add more of this once the first layer has dried. And of course, Sparkle Silk is one of our new silks and it's one of our favorites. So there's that card. And this was the other card that I had showed you earlier, which is basically, basically doing the very same thing. And then this is the card that I did using our paper and our sparkle tape. And this is the card that I did in the first video using our embroidered rose and down here our uh, shaving cream marbling technique. The other card that I wanted to show you that I've done using the marbling technique is the card that I will do in the next video for you. It's this one here, and as you can tell again, the marbling technique, doesn't matter how many times you do it, none of them are going to look exactly the same. On this particular marbling technique, I use silks and our shaving cream. And then on the flower, or the leaf I mean, which is a new leaf. In fact, it comes active August 1st out of our holiday catalog. It's the one down here entitled Hello Fall. And so you have all these leaves, you have the acorn, and you have several words, along with our new little bows up here. And that's what I use with the die, of course, to do these two cards. And I will show you how I did my uh, leaves, made in a variety of colors like that, in the next video. But the background here is just the same of marbling, using our uh, whipped cream cardstock and using the shaving cream. So husbands look out because your wives are going to get your shaving cream. You can find all of the things I've used today on my website at www.funstampersjourney slash angelhugs. I will also have the pictures and list the ingredients on my blog, which is www janie-angelhugs.blogspot.com. So you can find them in both places. Have a great and blessed day. Goodbye.